taste and flavor are key assessors of selection, roasting, brewing, and how they correlate drives our decision-making process. Similarly, for those who just enjoy drinking coffee, understanding the process of tasting and flavors will help you better appreciate your coffee and determine your preferences. Put simply, to distinguish between taste and flavor, we use taste factors such as sweet, salt, sour, bitter, umami, etc. Flavor, which alludes to more the sensation. So body, mouthfeel, aftertaste, temperature, the spiciness, the juiciness, etc. With coffee, the first thing to acknowledge is that coffee is a seed from a fruit. As a result, the conditions that it is grown in, it's varietal, how it's harvested, how it's processed, how it's stored, how it's transported, roasted and made are all factors in the taste and flavor in the cup. Our ability to interpret what we are tasting and describe the flavor, I believe, is a learned process. Whether you're a professional or a regular coffee drinker, how to acknowledge and articulate these sensations is something we build over time. A big part of the enjoyment for the coffee drinker is being able to articulate what they're tasting. And a common way is to compare it to other foods or drinks, such as wine or fruits. Of course, this will vary depending on the audience, environment, and the culture you're part of. The SCA Coffee Flavor Wheel gives us a vocabulary common to coffees, especially if you live in a Western society. For us roasters and buyers, one of the main tools or methods we use is the process of cupping. Cupping involves a set of standards acknowledged worldwide, so there is a starting point to be all on the same page. Tasting more than one type of coffee is helpful in having points of reference. When comparing coffees, it's often easier to identify varying levels of acidity, body, sweetness, the different flavors going on as it cools, etc. For home enthusiasts, whether you follow the flavor wheel exactly or use variations, it's a great way to evaluate flavor in your coffee, especially when you have lots of them to compare. It's often helpful tasting coffees with others or those who work in the field to expand your coffee vernacular. And some third wave cafes frequently run coffee cuppings and tasting sessions for the public. Then again, you might just want to order a few different espressos from your local coffee shop and talk about the differences with a friend. Some of the things to look out for include bitterness, acidity, body, mouthfeel, and aftertaste. The aim is to make sure your coffee isn't necessarily dominated by any one of those, so it's more balanced and satisfying to drink. In the past, I've encountered customers who say their coffee is bitter. To which I reply, is it like an aspirin tablet on your tongue or a dark chocolate bitterness? And it's often neither, and we've realized that it just had a level of acidity that we're not expecting. Also, bitterness has a lot of negative connotations, but for us, it plays a key role in achieving balance. Imagine your favorite single region dark chocolate. It would have an underlying bitterness, but mix that with a lot of sugar and milk for balance, and it's a different story. On the flavor side of things, body is a descriptor associated with the weight of coffee on your tongue. Mouthfeel is exactly that. How does the texture feel in your mouth? Does it feel thin or perhaps like honey? With aftertaste, we're talking about what is the lasting impression? Does it end straight away or does the taste linger? Understanding flavor differences adds to the enjoyment of coffee and might allow you to choose the types of beans that provide the flavor you prefer. It helps us make more informed decisions in choosing what coffees we may want to drink, depending on what we feel like. For example, I might need a pick-me-up, so I'll go for something that is maybe natural processed, bigger bodied, more intense, with a really long aftertaste. Real slap in the face, double ristretto which personally isn't really my go-to. Or if I've just had a big breakfast, I may want a filter coffee with lighter body, a bit more acidity and less intensity to see me through. I often just feel like tasting what's in season. Like other foods, I'm more interested in tasting them when they're potentially at their best and freshest. I generally lean toward coffees with less emphasis on body, but more delicate and with more acidity and complexity. 
My advice for anyone who's tasting is not to break things down necessarily into definitives of what's good and what's bad, but what do I like and what don't I like. Hopefully this video has given you some examples of what to look out for. The differences in flavors and how you can bring out the best in your coffee at home.